Okay, so once again, this is uh, Dungeons and Dragons Champions Crane, part of the Gold Box Classic bundle over on Steam. Yes, meanwhile, back in, in Karen, welcome back to Spiritor. If you don't know what this, uh, the Dungeons and Dragons classics are over on Steam, there's a link there to the store. It explains basically what's everything's in there, which is what you're basically seeing. This is the launcher for all the stuff that's in there. So a bunch of different, 30 games total, I believe. And there's a few. I mean, it'll keep you busy for a while if you're into this stuff, which I am. Am I going to play them all? Huh. <sighs> I really shouldn't have bought it. I really shouldn't have. I don't have the time to play all these, but there's some of them I really do want to play. So, and that's why we're playing Champion's Grin, because this is a game that came out back in 1990, which I did actually play back then. Um, I don't remember too much of specifics, because 30, 33 years ago now, actually. So, I don't remember too many of the specifics, but uh, it's coming back here and there as we play it. So, yeah. Cherry pick oh, I'm definitely cherry picking. Because some of them just... Uh, some of them... Some of the games that were done in the late 80s and, and early 90s, you know, it's... Games have changed a lot in the past 30 years. And you really don't... If you grew up in that era, like I did, or was an adult, young adult at that time, like I was, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying. If you are a 30 year old today playing the games of today and you look back at these things and you go, what the hell is that? You know, that's understandable because it thing was, things were different 30 years ago and you know, graphics weren't as good. Sound weren't as, wasn't as good. You know, game design in general wasn't there yet, even though these games are considered classics basically. And it's not because, you know, I'm not saying the games are bad. I'm just saying they're different. And if you didn't grow up playing these games, you're not going to understand how important these games really are for the industry today. And you know, that's just the, the way things are. Because without these games, you don't have the games of today. Because these guys were laying the foundation for today's stuff. So, yeah, foundational. These are very much foundational games. And even these are based on games that came before them back in the 80s and the late 70s. So, you know, they're all connected. And if you, you know, if you do every, anything you're ever going to do in life, walk, to a, walk up to a Gen X nerd and say thank you. He's your gamer today. Just go up to a Gen Xer and say thank you, because without us, the Gen X nerds, you would not have the game gaming industry that you have today. <laughs> so just saying that, to put that in perspective a little bit. So you still play Tiberian Sun. Sure you do. <laughs> sure you do. <laughs> anyway. Orb Wars. Oh, or you're the first person that actually has mentioned Orb Wars, Dispirator. I used to play the crap out of that game on Genie. Which was all text characters, yep. Not a zoomer, Xer. Just remember that, Greg. Xer, just like you. And the thing is about Orb Wars was is they actually had a, um, a graphics um, interface for it because it started off as all text characters, but eventually they did have a, a basic uh, graphics for it, and which made the game that much more enjoyable. I remember when they did that. You played TIE Fighter 96, and you're an elder millennial. <laughs> but yeah, Disparity is the first person to mention Orb Wars that I can remember. I've always wanted to talk about it with somebody, <laughs> but I'm afraid to mention it because I don't think anybody else has ever played it. Because it wasn't, and well, I guess when I played it, it was, it always had people playing it and stuff. I mean, it was a popular game when it was out, but I've never really heard anybody else mention it before, even though I thought about it many times over the years. Because it was a it was a good game, it really was. And if you want to know what it was, Google it. I'm sure it's out there on Google. I'm sure there's a wiki page for it somewhere. But it was a good game. So, anyway, let's get started. Okay, so play. Oh, I guess we should show. So, because this is a uh, a thing, so we have multiple files. We have uh, the manual codes clue book, that kind of fun stuff that you can use. But we already have that stuff ready to go. So I gotta move stuff around on my screen here. Play. Okay, so. We'll save game. This. And my screen over a little bit. Okay, so let's explain what's going on on the screen for you guys. 
or peace. No, there'll never be peace between the orbs. Anyway, lower right hand corner, the big brown splotch that is a uh, part of the gold box uh, companion. Um, and what it does, it's, it's basically a mod, basically for these uh, dox, DOS box games. And with this one, the, the brown box thing is our map. When we're outside traveling around in the, the country, you'll see the map of the area. When we go into a city or a dungeon or combat, the, the map will change to that particular location. And specifically for cities and dungeons, it'll map stuff out so you can see doors and stuff like that. And it'll show up there. And I'd make that box bigger, but uh, there's not that much room to spare here on the screen. So anyway, you'll see stuff. It'll be fine. And then at the bottom of uh, the main window there, underneath where it says Dungeons and Dragons and all the names and stuff, um, are our characters. Now what the funny part is, is when you actually play the game, it's not in the game screen. That's outside. Because on my screen, what I've done, or is where the characters are, they're actually at the top of the DOS box window. And the map is to the right of it. But it takes up basically the whole right side. <laughs> it's it's much larger than it is on the, the streaming screen. And then, of course, on the streaming screen, you can see the characters are down below. And that's just a matter of... Uh, just relocating that stuff simply to show off the Dungeons and Dragons logo at the top and that kind of fun thing. So, anyway, this is our redone party. Um, yesterday, we spent six hours playing the game, basically, and failing multiple times and all this other fun stuff. And my general opinion of why that was happening was just flaws, setting up characters, not for you guys so much as in like Blue Cools, Jeff, uh, hobo and Desperador. It was just the uh, Gimpy and Betty could have been something else to be a little bit more helpful to the to the group. So in this case, um, let's go through everybody's characters real quick. So Desperador, he is our Knight of the Crown. If you're not familiar with Dra Dragonlance, Knights uh, Knights of the Crown, Rose, or whatever that was it, Knight of the Heart, I think is the third one. Um, they're basically a paladins is kind of what they are, but they're not as powerful as a paladin. So, but they're the general same idea. And, you know, it's a melee guy, plain and simple stuff. The cool thing about uh, the knights, though, is they're starting equipment. They start off with plate mail, a shield, and a long sword. Rabikov. Rabik? Is it Rabikov? Thank you for following. Welcome to the stream. My name yes, is same. Veronica, and welcome to Gimpy's Twitch channel. If you are enjoying what you are watching, please click the follow button in the lower right corner of the video screen. That way you will be notified by Twitch when Gimpy goes live. You can also find Gimpy on YouTube where he posts previous episodes and highlights of the stream. Just scroll down under the video screen and click the YouTube button in the About section. Then click the subscribe button to follow. Also, please like and comment on his videos. He won't bite. I promise. That's it. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Anyway, as I, so, Desperator. It's I basically went through and redid all the characters this morning. And the funny thing about Desperator is his stats. That was the first roll. This was the first roll when we created Desperator. I shit you not. These are unmodified stats. This was the first roll for all those stats: three eighteen to seventeen, a sixteen, and a ten. <laughs> And I just went, yeah, I think we'll be keeping this one. <laughs> so I can't believe it was the first roll. <laughs> so anyway, um, no, I didn't. It was the, that was the that was the very first roll of the morning. Well, actually, no, I take that back. Gimpy was the first remake character, but of it was with Gimpy, Betty, and then Desperador. Desperador was the third character made, and that was the very first roll. Hey Jeff, welcome back. So. So I got that. And then I also read the manual, and uh, or at least parts of it, and went through different parts. And they they actually have a section on suggesting on what you know characters to bring and equipment and all this other fun stuff. So so in this case, um, oh, and here's another fun. Before we get to that part, is because the characters from yesterday were carrying a bunch of around a bunch of stuff that we collected, like banded mail and broadswords and all this other fun stuff that we picked up yesterday. Well, apparently, if you don't delete those characters and you create a new character with the same name, they get their inventory. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> we had a bunch of, uh, like I said, we had some broadswords floating around, some extra long swords, um, uh, armor, and stuff like this. So we're pretty equipped out for starting characters. So yeah. Anyway, um, the manual actually suggested you bring um, a duplicate or a, um, replaceable. No, well, two, we'll just say bring two melee weapons with you, and make and try to have a, a ranged weapon for everyone if they can use them. And the reason for the two melee weapons is because one of the draconians that we'll be fighting against, um, when you kill them, they turn to stone, and there's a chance that your weapon gets stuck in their body until the end of combat. So, you know, if you want to have a weapon after you kill one of them and accidentally get your weapon stuck, you need a second weapon. So, anyway, so that's why you'll see a lot of, like, long sword, long sword and broad swords, that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's the spirit arm. And then Vukrul's the first. <laughs> if you saw yesterday's stream, you would understand the joke behind this name. Too bad Vukrul's isn't here to understand, to see this. But Vukrul's died twice yesterday. Um, so we actually were, we're, start, we were starting on Vukrul's the third. But, uh, you know, we ran out of time there on the stream. That's when we decided, oh, we're done. But anyway, Vukrul's, um, we, his... We rolled him, or kept rolling him until he got a strength of 1856 and a constitution, I think it was 18. And then we modified the character to be uh, constitution 19, just to get a few more hit points, being a fighter, that kind of stuff. And I think I've reduced his uh, intelligence, wisdom to compensate, you know, just to be more fair for the constitution increase. Because fighters don't need those stats anyway. Anyway, um, so he's wearing battle axe, or sorry, he's using a battle axe, banded mail. Backup weapon of longsword, also has a short bow to use if necessary, lots of arrows, so he's all set to go. And again, Dwarven Fighter. And then we have Jeff the Cleric, who was yesterday. And he's a human cleric of uh, Meshackle. And I've also found out by reading the manual that each of the clerics actually get special abilities based on the god they follow. And Nishakal is, um, he gets a bonus to healing. Plus one dice to healing, I think, is what what his bonus is. And I think he gets, I think that's about it. But anyway, that's a big thing. So Nishakal clerics are basically the main healers. I couldn't remember, you know, what they did. But anyway, in the manual, each, uh, like I said, each one of the of the deities gives their clerics special little abilities. Hey, Voidlock, welcome back. Long time no see. Anyway, so... Jeff, 18 Wisdom, 17 Dexterity, 17 Constitution. Um, and I believe with him, we modified his role a little bit to give him, I think, one point of strength and one point of dexterity, something like that, and reduced his intelligence and compensation, I think. Something like that. So, anyway, his items, a Maze Shield, Scale Mail, and Maze. Ta-da. And again, Scale Mail was left over from yesterday. I to type a whole sentence. That's okay. Is the bundle worth getting at the moment? Uh, I bought it on sale. So if you can buy it on sale, I don't say why not. Because it's 30, it, there's 30 games in the bundle for this stuff. So if you, have pro, if you don't have a problem paying full price for 30 games, go for it. But I bought it for when it was on sale on Steam for like, what, $32, $34, something like that. So... I, I think that's a that's not a bad deal. If you can buy it on sale for, you know, 30, 30 to thirty five dollars, I would say go for it. If you're into these games, of course. If you've never played them, I, you don't know what you're getting into. Some have aged harshly, yes. Others have not, but others have done are doing pretty well. Oh, thirteen of them are fifty four percent off. Well, it depends on what the games are. I don't know which ones are actually off because I can't really look at that right now. <laughs> so, anyway, Jeff the Cleric, human, neutral good, Meshackle, Cleric. So Jeff's uh, job is to be, you know, stuff. And then we have Gimpy. So we, we recreated Gimpy from a um, fighter mage to a cleric mage. Why? Because I noticed yesterday we had some, we only had one healer, that was Jeff, and it would have been better if we had two healers, <laughs> just to point out. Basically, we had um, Gimpy was a fighter mage, Jeff is the cleric, 
And then we had Betty as a uh, mage, mage thief. And so we had two, basically two mages and one cleric. We needed a little bit more healing, I think, a little bit more buffing. The mages are you're fine and whatever, but I think we can do with we can do okay with one mage, um, but two clerics having two clerics in the group I think will be very helpful. So that's why we did we did Gimpy as a cleric ma a cleric mage, and he as you can see is Majer and Majeric has a the special bonus there is they turn undead as if they were two levels higher than what they currently are. So in this case he'd be considered level four. That's how that works. And then a white mage, that's just an alignment thing. They get special uh, um, schools of, uh, of magic type deal. Um, I think. I don't think it really. I mean, these are the spells he has currently ma memorized because... Oh, and then the Majera also gets the silence 15 foot radius. That's another thing too. So yeah. So these guys, and then, so this gives him, you know, a lot of spells to play around with, which is fine. And we should be better. Now the interesting part, though, is going to be his items. <laughs> Currently, he's got chain mail <laughs> left over from yesterday. Um, you can use mace, quarter staff, and a sling staff. So I'm, I'm curious to see if he's going to be able to cast magic spell, or magic user spells with chain mail on. I think he should be able to. I probably should have looked at that in the manual, but anyway. We'll find out the hard way, I'm sure. So anyway, there's Gimpy, the Cleric Mage. And then we have Hobo, the Kender. He's actually a Ranger. Oh, and here's funny, too. is he start, if, While everybody else's characters started at level 1, for some reason, Hobo's coming up as a level 2 Ranger. I'm not sure why, but he's a Kender. And he's and also read up on the manual that dexterity does give you a bonus to hit with ranged weapons, which he's gonna that's his thing. He's using a hoop pack and wearing leather armor. He's got two hoop packs. Why? If they're it's a ranged weapon, because these can be used as melee weapons too. They're basically a staff. So in case he just happens to kill the right kind of draconian and he loses it, he's got a backup just in case. Because they actually should guess that too. Because they suck. I don't think so. I mean, he's got 31 hit points at level two. That was some. That's some really good dice rolling. Okay, and then we have Betty. Betty is a uh, well, an SD elf thief. Like yesterday, she was a mage thief, but we figured let's fo have her focus on being a thief. That way, she can have a better chance of opening opening doors and picking locks and that kind of fun stuff. And for her, she's going to be using mostly a bow, um, but she also does have a dagger, a bunch of arrows, and a long sword if she needs it. So, but mainly her role, role is to sit back and shoot people with arrows with that 19 dexterity, and she can backstab. And I found out how to backstab too. Rangers, they're only good for DPS in general. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> Gimpy is raising anyway, money for the National the MS Society for the 10th year in a row here on Twitch. Walk MS 2023 in San Diego is April 22nd, but Mrs. Gimpy, Mickey, Rocket, and Gimpy will be doing private walks in April and May. They are walking one mile for every thousand dollars raised. If you would like to help with a donation, please visit stompingoutms.org. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Anyway, so uh, backstabbing this, it basically the way it works is if the the thief has to be on the opposite side of the enemy from a friendly or base. Well, actually it's not even that it's whatever side a friendly attacks an enemy on. So say they're on their left, the, your friendly is on the left side of the enemy and they attack from that side. Then the, the thief has to come up from behind on the right side and then they get a backstab on there and they get a better, better chance to hit and do a little bit more damage. That's my understanding how it works. So you have to pay attention. It's a setup. Right, you have to pay attention to what your other characters are doing in the group in order to set up the backstab. Dream ears, welcome to the stream. Dump, dump, dump. Know what MS is, but yet we don't, but don't know what the name stands for. Yeah, it's actually two words. It's multiple sclerosis. Unless you live in a particular um, United States state, in which case it's Mississippi. But in reality, for this case, it's multiple sclerosis. 
Is this first edition or uh this is a uh, it's it's dragon lance <laughs> it's technically i think it's technically advanced dungeons and dragons but it's based in the dra in the dragon lance universe so stuff is different but i'm pretty sure it's advanced under the dragon it's pretty consistent with everything there although it's it's post I think it actually is post advanced Dungeons and Dragons because they're using Thaco here to hit armor class zero, which is pre which is post advanced Dungeons and Dragons, I believe. I don't. I think <laughs> again, been a long time since I've done uh, tabletop Dungeons and Dragons. Um, it's three point five. No, it is not three point five. It is definitely not three point five or not three either. It's it's closer to advanced or second edition than it is anything else. It is definitely not three because there's no, the multi-classing is very different. Um, like in this, the, the pre, the multi-classing is all predetermined. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's between for it's between advanced and second somewhere around there. The thing is, I don't know if it's even second edition because there's classes in second edition that don't exist here. But again, that might be related to the whole dragon Lance thing. Is there a unicorn rider class? No, there is not, Greg. No, there is not. So like I said, I'm pretty sure this is advanced Dungeons and Dragons, I think. It might, or just after it. Because again, the, the the stuff in here is, you know, specific to Dragonlance, such as the 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 knights, right? They're not paladins, but they're kind of like paladins. So there's customization doing going on here as far as stuff like uh the, the mages are different than they are in advance because they're affected by their alignments determine stuff and then of course the the clerics they get special abilities um, and stuff from their deities so you got that going on and then of course there's a kender kender is a unique race to dragonland so nice with some uh, charisma and a bit of cleric yes they get the cleric spells later on Yes. So, if you don't want to talk. so the spiriter is the knight. He's currently a knight of the crown, and eventually he'll be able to cast spells like a cleric. But yeah, so this is advanced advanced dungeon dragons. Okay, there you go. There we go. Yeah, because armor class and everything in thank in thanko. I don't remember thanko in advanced, but it could be. I don't remember. You tempted about all of them. Well, the ones you actually listed off, Void, those are those are some of the better ones in the in the group. Thirteen games because all the Forgotten Realm stuff is pretty good. Silver boxes are good. The Kren is what we're doing here. Ravenloft is tricky. Dark Sun is good. Genie's Curse I haven't played. Deathkeep I haven't done either. Dragon Strike is yeah. Fantasy Empires is a pretty good game, and Spelljammers I haven't played yet either, which I. That's one of the ones I actually do want to play, but we'll see. Anyway, we should get started because we have we have stuff to do. Okay, so that's where we are. Save current game, alpha, and begin adventuring. Remember, armor classes, AC. The lower the number, the better. <laughs> the lower the number, the better. Okay, we need the adventure, so we're done this stuff. So where do you want to go? Uh, we already talked to the com com commandant. I have no more specific information. I have every confidence in you. Remember to re report back. So what he wants us to do, he wants us to go up to Throttle, which is just north of our position, and find Cameron, who is a character from the Dragonlance uh, universe. Blah, blah, blah. We're supposed to find him. He's supposed to be up there. So that's our first goal. Um, the hall, this is just where we go to stuff. Armor, we've already been to. And there's a vault, temple, bar, and stuff. Let's talk to the bar. Go to the bar. What's your pleasure? Have a drink. What will you drink? We'll drink ale. Your tavern ale 40. Isn't that the same one we got yesterday when we were drinking ale? Just a second. So we have to go to our journal. Tavern tale 40. Don't drink the beer. The bartender washes his feet in it. So there we go. 
When a lot of numbers are in double negative digits, enemies explode. That's a thing. Uh, have a drink. Not drink a beer. No, don't drink the beer. Drink the wine. Tavern Tale 23. Tavern Tale 23. So that again, you have to go into the manuals. Look at this stuff. This is how things used to be done, right? It's been quiet for for, for too long. Something's got to happen soon. So it's not really helpful for this stuff, is it? Stop that. Okay, so I will leave. Where do you wish to go? We want to leave, leave. Okay, so this is our map, and as you can see, the brown square in the lower right hand corner changed. So there's the map. Now, if you look really, really closely, you can see text written on the map that they put there. We're going to throttle again, which is to the north. Do not enter. Move. And our spells are ready to go. A lot of the tavern stuff is fluff. Yes, it is. It is very much fluff. As you rise, have you stop a rise, you spot a caravan under attack. Draconians have already massacred the men and are now slaughtering the women and children. They pause when they see you, then rush to attack. Dum dum dum. So, our first fight. Okay, and as you can see, the brown box changed again, showing where the enemies are to our north. We've got, and the numbers, if you can see them, are the hit points that everybody has. So we have five, or four. Four draconians with uh, nine hit points each, and they're Baz. Baz. Baz or Baz, I don't know. But anyway, AC4, hit point nine. Okay, and this is... This is Betty. Betty has a short bow. So I'll move a little bit closer. Aim manual. Oh look, you might be able to hit him. And of course I miss. And Hobo. I had to re I redid people's colors. Hobo kind of looks weird. You want to move this way. Made him blue skin because that's what Hobo wanted yesterday or something. And actually, he's actually holding a hoop pack too, which is look like a little tuning fork type deal. So aim. Combat is missing music. Hey, look, hit for four. So he's down to five hit points. And Spirit Ore. This way and stand here. Hello everyone. Guard. My name is Veronica and welcome to Gimpy's Twitch channel. If you are enjoying what you are watching, please click the follow button in the lower right corner of the video screen. That way you will be notified by Twitch when Gimpy goes live. You can also find Gimpy on YouTube where he posts previous episodes and highlights of the stream. Just scroll down under the video screen and click the YouTube button in the About section. Then click the Subscribe button to follow. That's it. Thanks. Yep, thank you. Hey, Tarkas, welcome back. Happy Thursday. Okay, so Gimpy's got a uh, sling staff. And of course he missed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I didn't think they were that fast. Jeff, um, nice miss. Who cools? Nice hit for seven. Almost killed it. Okay, the Sparador. Uh, let's see. The one to our right has five hit points left, so hit him. Or not. Hobo. Oh, Hobo's supposed to yell. Yell is supposed to put all the enemies into a rage to make them easier to hit. Mm. Chance to miss better or more? 
As long as they resist, which they did. Anyway, good girls get them. Good hit. Good. Battlestar Galactica Deadlock is free on Steam right now. If you do not already have it, I suggest you grab it. Okay, Gimpy. Uh, we're doing okay, right? Yeah, we're fine. Okay, so... That one's almost dead. Oh, look, he's dead, dead. Going after Hobo. Um... Around this way. Now that weapon. <coughs> you items. Dagger. Oops. Sorry. Got to unready this one, then ready that one. It'll be fine. And missed. Okay, Jeff. Oh, nice hit. Kimpy. Uh, now with that weapon. You item. So now with that. Oh, look, you can use a shield and a mace. Because cleric stuff. Move and miss. Okay, who hit this one? Was it not the spirit or it was? It was the dwarf. No, that's not the dwarf. That's Jeff. Jeff hit him from there. I don't think we're going to be able to backstab this thing. Not be able to hit it anyway. Can you crawls? Going up against this one. Nice miss. Nice miss. Good miss. Yeah, killed it. Good job. Okay, aim manual. Nice miss. Nice miss. Oh, nice. That was an actual backstab, too. That was a backstab. Lucrus has taken some damage. He'll be fine. <laughs> so we said yesterday didn't go so well for him. That's why it's Vukrul's the first. Okay, this is Jeff the Cleric. Uh, go this way, I guess. And miss. Can't be. Items. Don't need the shield. Oops. Don't need the mace. Is that all you can say? That was really poorly done. We're good. Ta da! So, that wasn't too bad. Good? Not good. It's not working. Guard. Do battle? No. Okay, so we picked up 108 experience points. Yeah, yes. Okay, so taking the stuff, 20 steel. So we'll take all that. How much do we take? We take 20. And that's that. Caravan lays in waste before you. The air is filled with the sounds of wailing women and children. All the draconians are slain, save one who rips a, a book from a dead man's hands. He turns to you and mercifully, merci uh, merely laughs. Then he takes a step and disappears. One of the surviving women comes up. Brave warriors, will you 
help us uh, reach the outpost. All of our menfolk have died. Do you help? Yes. Thank you for your help. Congratulations, the party received experience. Spirit gives his tie to the knighthood. Where do you wish to go? Commandant. Near to the office of the sound of battle, Sir Call drives his sword through the commandant who uh, uh, collapses. The body of, then rides and becomes a Sivak. Sir Carl murmurs, I was afraid of this. As you report, his face grows gray. This is much worse than we, th we feared. We have a patrol in throttle. Caraman leads it. Find him. Tell him he is desperately needed here. The imposter has emptied this outpost, emptied this outpost of troops. I know you are inexperienced, but I have no one else to send. Where do you wish to go? Uh, we didn't burn any spells, did we? So we will go to the end. And we'll fix up. That's it. We didn't use any magic, so we're good. And we didn't get any stuff, so... No problem. We'll save. We're doing the Iron Man. <laughs> so the optional Iron Man manual. Optional Iron Man, whatever. Anyway, trying to use a save, 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 same, same, save slot as much as possible. In adventuring. Okay, let's uh, leave. Do you enter? No, we don't. We're going up the throttle. That's the little great dot with a yellow circle around it. And that's where we're supposed to be. That's where we're supposed to fight Caraman. Do you wish to enter? Yes. Look, it's Hobgoblins. Throttle's off limits to you. Leave and no one gets hurt. What do you do? We attack. So, <laughs> uh, Betty knew her items. She's currently using a dagger, so go back to the bow. Grab some arrows. Oh, we already have arrows equipped. Never mind, we're good. So, we want to aim. Who should we shoot first? Regular hobgoblins? Regular hobgoblins. Oh look, kill them. Good shot. Oh, but they're picking on you. You should yell though. Hobo's making all the hobgoblins angry. If you're going to piss them off, you got to leave them to dodge. And spirit or smack that one. Or not. Can't be. Cast. Uh, sleep. Okay, sleep has a two thing range, so. If we get lucky, we can sleep all those guys. Here's one. Here's two. Not bad. Three out of seven so far. Five, or four out of seven. Five. Gimpy is raising money for the National MS Society for the tenth year in a row here on Twitch. Gimpy. Walk MS 2023 in San Diego is April 22nd, but Mrs. Gimpy... Mickey, Rocket, and Gimpy will be doing private walks in April and May. They are walking one mile for every thousand dollars raised. If you would like to help with a donation, please visit stompingoutms.org. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, let's do protection from evil on himself. So basically it makes them harder to hit because all these guys are evil, so. Gimpy, you got your spell off. Could use it again actually, but we'll save it. Gimpy. 
Okay, the spirit or start killing stuff. Or not. Betty. Yay. I don't know she gets to go again, too. Still don't know why she's getting two shots with a bow, but... Dink. That one's down. Dodge Hobo. Dodge Jeff. Guardian. Jeff. These are all asleep, so they're one-shot kills. Nice hit. Come on, Hobo. Be better. healing. It was Hobo. Hobo's is good. So Hobo's just down by... He's got 25 hit points left. He's good. Oh, Bless is something you're supposed to do before combat. Because I also read the description of Bless and why it wasn't working all the time the way I thought it was supposed to work yesterday. Because you cast it on somebody who's got a, an enemy next to them. Bless doesn't go doesn't work. So in this case, looking at the map, if Gimpy was to cast Bless on himself, uh, Hobo to the right wouldn't it wouldn't affect him because the enemy right next to him, and then the left of Jeff has he has enemies too. So it's only the four squares in the middle that be affected by the Bless. So we're not going to worry about Bless right now. Yeah. So aim. Make sure all the sleepers, you know, kill that one first. He's the biggest one. Okay, let's go help Hobo down here. Nice hit for four. Nice miss, Hobo. Okay, Gimpy. Kill this one so we can move over to the the main force up here. Uh oh. Hobo just got hit pretty hard. Come on. So Hobo's down to 17. But if we can kill this one, he can't do damage, right? Should use magic missile. Oh well. Sparador. Let's make sure these guys are dead. Get them group girls. Of course, one point short, but you know, whatever. <sighs> I'm so happy they're not actually showing us the rules, because that would probably be not a good thing to see. Oh, who was actually taking more hits now, I see. Oh, come on. Uh, 
Let's see, that one. Okay, we need to cast Cure Wounds on Hobo. Partially healed. Well, better than no heal. This guy really, this guy really that hard to hit? EC3. Oh, wow. Ukruza's got popped really well. good there. You know what the funny part is? Ukruza is actually supposed to have a little bonus, I think, fighting. No, it's giants. It's not hobgoblins. So many arrows being wasted. Finally. Okay, hobo. You can uh, move up here and aim. Shoot that guy or not. Wow. Jeff got hit pretty hard there, too. Here. We stand next to Gimpy. Jeff, he can't cast a spell because he was hurt this round, so he can't uh, can't uh, cast a spell. But Gimpy can cast cure light wounds. Good, but he moves. He can't move and cast a healing spells, so that's a thing. Partially healed. So, Jeff casts Cure Light Wounds. Let's miss. Cool, let's move up this way. I guess you can just do this. There we go. Cool's finally with a good hit. yourself. It's full healing for Jeff. So again, Jeff's the, the healer, the real healer of the group. He gets a bonus to heal thanks to his uh, little friend, his little god friend. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the dagger because I love throwing away um, arrows. What you really need is PCs that fight enemies like Rocket is fighting that scrunchy. That'd be awesome. He kicks the crap out of that scrunchy. It's a hobo. Hobo doesn't need to get closer because range. Hello everyone. Like that. My name is Veronica and welcome to Gimpy's <sighs> Twitch channel. If you are enjoying what you are watching, please click the follow button in the lower right corner of the video screen. That way you will be notified by Twitch when Gimpy goes live. You can also find Gimpy on YouTube where he posts previous episodes and highlights of the stream. Just scroll down under the video screen and click the YouTube button in the About section. Then click the Subscribe button to follow. Also, please click the Like buttons on his videos. You will feel better about yourself. That's it. Thanks. Yep, thank you, and happy Thursday. So we're going to go back to the bow. <laughs> uh, because she got, you know, as soon as she comes in the melee range, she gets popped, because, you know, it would be armor class 4. Okay. 
Now, Vukra's only has five hit points left for whatever reason. Um, that's Battle Axe, but he's got a bow he can use, so... So now he can sit back here and shoot this guy. Oh, look, he hit. Uh, Gimpy, I don't think, has any more heals to do. So, blast, magic missile, read magic. Eh. Points of damage down to ten. <sighs> Hobo. Good job, Gimpy with the hit. Sings down to five. He's dead. And a double shot. Wow, this guy has got to be really unhappy now. He's got to be really, really unhappy. Sorry about that. Mrs. Gimpy just came in and started talking. <laughs> Turns out she is going somewhere, so Doc can be on a little while. I'm not thinking about that. Yeah, Doc can be on here in a couple minutes. Okay, so uh, take look at all the stuff. So basically, shields are worthless, but the ring mail is stuff. It says the broadswords. So carry what we can. This is some money. Oh, scale mail. I think that's an upgrade for... Is it Rukul's or Jeff? I think scale is an upgrade for Jeff. I think scale is better than ring. A lot of stuff here, isn't it? Overloaded. So items. Oops. Share the money. There we go. So Jeff. So he's currently using scale mail. 
Oh. So he's good then. Armor class of two. Is it Fuku's then? He's using the bandit. And I think the scale is better than banded. Yes. Fuku's view items. So his arm class is currently two. So take that off. Put the scale on. Oh, it's not. <laughs> I thought scale was better than banded. Oh well. Okay, his armor class is down one because now the shield. So anyway, he's good. Uh, Jeff. Uh, Jeff is using scale. So she don't. So it goes plate scale scale. And all right, he's overloaded. Never mind. So that can't be hobo. Hobo can carry stuff. Now, if we wanted to, we could have a... Let's take all the stuff. Betty and uh, Sasha can carry a couple items. And shields are basically worthless. The ring might the ring mail might be worthless too. Or it's only not worth a whole lot. Anyway, so So it's just shields. Exit. Still treasure. Do you want to go back and claim your treasure? No. Hey Zenith, welcome to the stream. A true champions game. Yes it is. Yes it is. Search. Uh, camp real quick. Save. That. Nope. The DOS. Um, magic. Memorize. Oops. Jeff. Memorize. So. Cure light wounds. Oh, we did protection from evil too. That's what we did. Okay. So we set there. Yes, a gimpy. Memorize. Um. Hello, gimpy. It is time to take a break. It heals. Go check on the dogs. Your next break is in one hour. Sleep. There we go. Okay. Yes. And then rest. I'm sure that'll be fine. Let's try to con people into playing the old Goblox games, but they have a huge hurdle to get over for many. And what is that? What's the hurdle? The graphics? The sound? The quality game, I mean, it is a good game. These these are good, I mean, they're gold boxes for a reason. They're good games. SSI was one of the best developers back in the 90s. They made a lot of good games. And this is one of the ones they made. They actually made a number of the gold. The learning curve and the play style, it's slow and method method uh, methodical, even with the gold box assistances. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, you know what? All I found out, though, is... 
if you're used to playing turn-based games, it's really not that difficult. I mean, the learning curve isn't that small. The, the, actually, I think really what the turnoff for a lot of people is, you have to read the manuals. Because <laughs> the manuals have so much information in them. It's crazy. And especially, you know, like yesterday, we, I played the game basically, and I didn't really look at the man manual too much as far as classes and how magic works and you know, certain spells and that kind of stuff. And then I started reading it, this, this, and then yesterday at the end of the stream, I was like, oh, that went horrible, blah, 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 and said, we're going to start over again tomorrow. And this morning, I came out, and I recreated characters, and I read the manual beforehand, so I knew what we were looking for, that kind of stuff. And, you know, it, it's a little bit smoother right now, so kind of have to know the tabletop game to be able to put, you know, onboard the rules and subtly the classes and items. Uh, I don't know about that. No, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that one, but, and again, the tabletop game is, you know, this is based off of somebody looked it up earlier in the stream. It is based off of advanced Dungeons and dragons, which, you know, or, and that basically was replaced by second edition in the late eighties or mid to late eighties. So, but again, this game is, you know, I'm not saying that knowledge of the tabletop doesn't help you because it does. Oh, I'm giving, I played this game back in 1990. So it just, this is just total nostalgia for me. I, I, I like the game back in 1990 and I'm liking it now too. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very much 1990s as far as graphics and sound and that stuff and the UI and whatever, but you know, it's a, uh, it is it's still a solid game and turn-based turn-based tactics are my games of choice these days so and this fits right into that anyway having said all that i need to take a break <laughs> so i'm going to get up stretch my legs get some water that kind of thing be back in a few minutes if you've been watching the stream for any length of time i suggest you do the same so ah so be back shortly thanks for watching enjoy the dog video